Welcome back. Time for the next all new Magician 101 Christmas edition. Uh, the show for all magicians. We got a lot of questions this week, so thank you everybody who um, posted questions. Now, um, make sure to post your questions down below for next week. I'd love, I'd love to get at least five for next week, so post your questions. All right. So, um, let's get started. The first question comes from Mr. Tadpole221. He says, thanks again. If you had to move to another country outside of North America, what country would it be? Good question. I think I would move to uh, the UK, Great Britain, London, that, those, that kind of area. The people seem really nice over there, and the culture seems really cool, too. I would love to, like, go over there and, you know, just have really cool culture and nice people, too. So either Great Britain or probably either um, Australia. Australia seems cool, too. Not the dangerous, like, outback part, but, like, Sydney, like Sydney, Australia, those kind of places seem really nice. Um, Mr. Tadpole also says, what are your top three board games? Sorry for no magic questions. That's all right not to have any magic questions, because this is a show to ask any questions you want, magic or not. So my top three favorite board games, I don't get to play board games with anybody. Nobody wants to play with me anymore. Uh, just because nobody has any time. I really don't have time either. Um, but my top three favorite board games, my number one favorite board game is Monopoly. I love to play Monopoly, but I don't get to play it with anybody, like I said. So, you know, that, that's kind of a, that's kind of a shame. Uh, my other one is, uh, the Game of Life. Not the newest version, the classic version of the Game of Life. Same thing with Monopoly. The classic Monopoly is my favorite. The classic Game of Life is my favorite. And another game that I really love, it's kind of a toss-up, because I love, um, I love Mousetrap, that was a good one, but another one that I really loved was 1313 Dead End Drive, if you've never heard of this game, it was released by, it was a murder-themed board game from Parker Brothers, released back in 2002, it was a sequel to the 1993 game 13 Dead End Drive, which played the same way, but 1313 Dead End Drive was a little bit of, uh, it had a little bit more cooler features. The story behind the game revolved around the death of Aunt Agatha, a wealthy old woman and heiress to a kitty litter empire. Sixteen of her closest companions have gathered at her estate of the reading of her will and to collect their inheritance. They must escape Aunt Agatha's trap-filled mansion before midnight. And, um... Uh, basically, at the start of the gameplay, players are passed out air cards, which uh, correspond to palms that are placed on the board. There are a total of 16 characters, so it is almost always the case that players control more than one character. Players are required to keep the roles of the character cards secret from, secret from their opponents. Additionally, there are 32 playing cards, which allow players to do special things during their turn, such as spring traps or instantly move pawns to other rooms. This is done also one clock strikes midnight card that is placed at the bottom of the playing cards and if this card is drawn by any player the game ends. During each turn players roll two dice and move two pawns which correspond to each uh, each dice roll. Players are allowed to move any pawn on the board regardless if it's if they're holding its corresponding air card or not so that they move closer to or further away from a trap space or the door. A pawn can be moved onto a trap space by exact roll only, and when pawn is moved onto a trap space, the player must draw a card from the playing card stack. To spring a trap, a player must have a corresponding trap card in their possession. Springing traps is not mandatory, however. There also are secret passage spaces that players can use to travel quickly around the mansion. And um, when a character... Uh, picture is on the is on the wall, you try to get that pawn out the door if you have the player card. The person who gets the player out of the door wins the game. So, um, yes, yeah, so it's a really cool game if you've never played it. And I was reading right off of Wikipedia there, the uh, rules of the game. Really fun game, and it's fun to spring the traps. There's like a fireplace trap where if you get the card and you spring it, they like get incinerated in the fireplace. They fall downstairs. It's a fun game, so I recommend looking it up. You can get it on eBay. Uh, you know, you can get a used version on eBay. It's a fun game to play. It's not a fun two-player game because you deal out every playing card, every player card, and if you don't have the person, you know the other person does. But if you, ha 
that if there's like three or four people that play, it's really fun because then you don't know who has the player card, so it's really fun. And then it's like the other person can be moving one of your player cards closer to a trap. So, really fun game. I recommend uh, getting that one if you don't have it already. Wayne Carter says, what is your least favorite trick? Um, I think I've answered this before, but um, my least favorite trick, I don't have a least favorite because tricks that are not in my show, I consider that um, my least favorite if that makes any sense. So, if a trick is not in my show, I don't, it's, it's, it's my least favorite, because I don't use it. If I don't use a trick, like, at all, or very much, then it's a least favorite trick, because I don't use it. Um, I gotta say, any tricks that use invisible thread are my least favorite, because I don't like using invisible thread. So, any ones that do are probably my least favorite, if I had to, if I had to choose a least favorite trick. Um, I can't tell you which tricks do use Invisible Thread, because that would give away the secret to the trick, so I can't go into that. But probably any that use Invisible Thread, or any that I don't have in my show currently. If I have it sitting up in the Magic Room, and I'm just like, mm, and I don't even use it's sitting up there, but it's never been used in my show, because I didn't like the secret of the method or whatever, then that's a least favorite trick for me. I, I guess. All right, uh, Amber Tyler has the next question. Thanks for answering, uh, and shout out. What is your favorite escape trick to perform, or with what? Rope, chains, handcuffs. P.S. I'm a girl. Um, very cool. I, I wasn't quite sure. So some people have um, usernames, and they're boys, but they have girl usernames or girl avatar or girl thumbnails. Um, you know, uh, logos. So it's weird when I see one and I'm like, oh boy, you don't know. But very cool you're a girl and you're interested in, in magic because we need more magicians who are females in this craft because more magician females are great or not even magicians but escape artists, you know, or whatever. If you're interested in this, in the magic craft itself, we, it's great that you're a girl because we need more women to be magicians. All right. So, my favorite escape trick to perform, um, or with what? I love the straight jacket. Uh, you guys know I have a straight jacket. It's a fun one to do. Um, and if done correctly, it really looks like you are struggling to get out of it. It's really fun. There's a trick that a magician has done um, at the show I've talked about a couple times before called the Comedy and Magic Society. It's a local meetup. We do it once a month. Well, I don't do it. Uh, I go to it. But uh, magi some magicians in the area, like Bob Sheets, you've probably heard of him, um, and some other ma local magicians, uh, get together once a month. And we have guests come in and guest magicians come in from – uh, different parts of the country, and even right here in the Maryland area, and they do it, and we do a show for like, they, they do a show for like two hours, and then we go home, uh, it's a lot of fun, but uh, there's, one of the producers, his name is um, Mark Phillips, he does a smoking jacket escape, where he talks about it's, he can't afford a Houdini straight jacket, so he bought a Houdini smoking jacket online, and uh, he's handcuffed, I'm sure they're like fake handcuffs, trick cuffs, but he's handcuffed behind the back, and he's wearing this smoking jacket. He's wearing a, a like a, a very fancy jacket. He's handcuffed. This giant, like, sheet, this giant cloth gets lifted up, and when it gets lowered, the handcuffs are still on his hands, but half of the smoking jacket is off. Then he gets lifted up again, and it gets taken down, and this time... Um, I'm trying to remember the exact way it goes. Um, the smoke. Uh, oh, he he uh, makes a mistake. So the smoking jacket is kind of stuck in between his legs as his as his hands are in between his legs. So it's kind of kind of kind of this deal. So it's like this with the smoking jacket. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to hit the Christmas tree. But it's kind of like that. Smoking jacket's around his waist and everything. So it's a nice co comedic moment. And then then it gets lifted up again. and says, "Drop it, drop it. I'm blacking out." And the smoking jacket's over his head, handcuffs are still behind his back, and then afterwards, smoking jacket is off, and then he escapes, one hand first, he's like, thank you, and he talks to the two spectators on stage, he says, thank you, one hand, and then he brings the other one out, thank you, and then the cuffs can come off. So it's a really fun trick, filled with a lot of comedic moments, And but anyways, the original name of that trick is called the suit jacket escape, so you use a man's suit jacket. Or even a woman's one would work too, since you are a woman, uh, since you're a girl. But, uh, but based, so that was a trick I was thinking about starting to do, but I need to buy something like trick cuffs or, uh, the Houdini chain shackle escape. I need to buy something like that, uh, cause I don't have any of that escape 
stuff in my collection. So I need to buy something like that, but I do want to do the smoking jacket escape. Because I have a suit, so I want to use the suit jacket and do that trick. It looks like a lot of fun, so really cool. Um, so, but I do love doing um, straight jacket escapes, because I think it really brings it back. That's that's my favorite item to perform with, is straight jackets, because it really brings it back to the days of Harry Houdini. And you and people can see something that, that they don't really they don't really get to see. You know, I mean, they can see it. It's not like I'm the only one who does a straight jacket escape, but... It's so rare, not every magician does straight jacket escapes. So it's not something they'd see all the time, which is great. And it's really fun for spectators when they get to see me do a straight jacket escape. All right. And Richie Peters says, thanks, what are your top three stage tricks? All right. This is hard uh, to pick my top three stage tricks. There's a lot of good ones out there. Um, you can actually do the angry sponges trick, which you can't get anymore, but you can do that on stage. You could if you wanted to. Um, so let me, I gotta think about my top three favorite stage tricks. You know, I really love the vanishing bandana. A lot of magicians don't like that trick because all you're doing is you're not doing really any work. You're just listening to a tape or a, or that, that's how old I am. These used to be on tapes when I first started doing magic. But, you know, they were on, they're on CDs now. And all you're doing is you're just listening. And you're just following along. And it's not you. It's not your own personality. But, I gotta tell you, I've seen a lot of magicians do the vanishing bandana. And it is a fun trick to do. It really does get a lot of laughs. When you're, when spectators are listening to you, listening to your, um, Tape, they're laughing along as you as, as you have this puzzled look when you dump out the banana and you're like, what is this? And then the, the crowd goes nuts when the tape says, T pick up the yellow bandana and you pick up this banana. The crowd just starts laughing and they, and it's nonstop laughter throughout the whole thing. So I love the vanishing bandana, but not the vanishing bandana as much. I love Paul Harris's trick. It's that, no. Um, not Paul Harris. I don't remember his name. It'll come to me after I get finished from this. But it's the uh, David Ramsey's multiplying bottle routine. It takes the premise of the vanishing bandana, but does it in a multiplying bottles. It's really fun. It's actually on my channel. I think there's two videos of it on my channel. So go look that up. Multiplying bottles. It's a really fun trick. Uh, when I do it with the uh, with the da with the David Ramsey thing, it's a lot of fun, uh, because it takes the same premise, and it's like, oh, welcome to the Trick of the Month Club, and then it talks about, you do the whole multiplying bottle routine, done with a lady on the tape. Another really good one that I've seen was with, um, just recently at the Comedy and Magic Society, there was a guy there, um, day after Thanksgiving, when we had the last show there, and um, he did a version of the, of the Vanishing Made Dana that I really loved. He pulled out his iPhone, started talking to Surrey, on, and Surrey on the iPhone was like, would you like to learn a magic trick? And the guy said, uh, sure. And it was the vanishing bandana done with Surrey on the iPhone. I thought that was amazing. So I like the, uh, so to answer your question, vanishing bandana, one of my, uh, top three. Another one that I really love is, um, oh gosh. Oh gosh. Um, I just had one that went out the window. All right, but I'll go on to the next one. Uh, one I just got for Christmas. Actually, we spent Christmas, uh, a special Christmas, 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 the, 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 a special Christmas with my great grandmother. She's going away to Ohio. She's 95 and she still goes on vacation and stuff. She's going to see her other family in Ohio for Christmas. So we spent Christmas with her and I got a couple things from her. One of them I got was the I Hate Kids Magic Trick. That one I cannot wait to do when I actually end up doing another uh, stage show. The I Hate Kids Magic Trick, you have three wallets and you bring a kid up on stage and you talk about how you don't like performing with kids because whatever, 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 and you talk, tell the kid, you start to get a little rude and mean to the kid, not a lot, but you just say, like, oh, you're never going to win this magic trick, I like to win, so I'm, I'm going to win, you talk about how you put a dollar inside of one of the wallets, and the kid picks one of the wallets, one, two, or three, and you get really mad, and you're like, this is why I hate working with kids, the kid opens the wallet, there's a dollar inside of it, so the kid walks back to his seat, gets to keep the dollar, 
and then after uh, he gets back to his seat, you say, now wait a minute, I told you I don't like to lose. You open the, the next wallet up, and they, you pull out another bill. It's a bigger bill, so it's a 5 or a 10 or a 20, and then you open the third wallet, and it's, the, and it's a $20 bill inside the third one. You say, you, you could have had this bill, pull it out, it's a 5. You could have also had this one, it's a $20 bill. That's why I never like, that's why I always win, and you always will lose. And you kind of make fun of the kid. Um, that is um, now, the, the packaging says perfect for family entertainers uh, and also stage magicians. I don't think it's very good for family entertainers. I mean, the whole point of the trick is to, if you the whole point of what the guy was saying on the DVD, the way he does his routine is he's doing, like, corporate gigs where there's all adults there, but one adult will, if one adult, like, brings their kid and they're, like, somebody special, like a CEO of the company has brought his daughter or his son or whatever... The thing is, he talks about how there's we're supposed to be kids there, it's supposed to be all adults, and I hate kids. But if you're a family entertainer, you you can't use the I hate kids routine because that's what you do is family shows for kids. So you have to really change it up. But it's a really fun trick, basically where uh, the spectator picks a dollar and then the rest of them have more and bigger money inside of there. So it's really cool. And uh, my other favorite stage trick, if I oh gosh, this is hard, would probably be. Trying to think of all my... Oh, the Nesta Boxes! The Nesta Boxes! Yes, that was the one I was thinking about before. Um, that's that's really fun. Uh, because, especially, it's the David Chavette's No Assistant Nesta Boxes. That's a really fun one, because um, you don't need... An, normally, with a lot of set of... A lot of Nesta Boxes sets, you actually have to... Uh, have somebody backstage load in the object into the box. So you have like a special prop that, like, if you let's say you're using a, a little kid's shoe, you have to make the shoe vanish and have a way to get the shoe off stage and have somebody like an assistant in the back load in the shoe into the uh, last box. This one, the uh, with the no assistant nest of boxes. <clears throat> excuse me, you can have the box in the audience. Somebody can be holding on to it throughout the entire show, and then at the end of the show, boom, you can open it up and show whatever object you want that can fit inside the last box can be inside the last box, like a dollar or a ring or whatever. So that's a really fun one, and it's great because it can be done in full view, and you don't have to take the box and bring it off from backstage, and people can think, oh, well, something, somebody is backstage loading in that item, because if the box is on stage for, in full view the whole time, or somebody in the audience is holding onto it, it's a bigger magic moment, because they're like, wait, how did that signed dollar bill or whatever get into that last box, because that guy's been holding on to it throughout the entire show, so it's really cool, and really nice magic moment, all right, that's going to go for this week's Magician 101, sorry it was so long, I didn't think it was going to be the, this that long this week, uh, join us next week for the last Magician 101 Christmas show, uh, right, the day right before Christmas, we'll have a, a good Christmas show, and that's going to do it, thank you guys so much, and make sure to post your questions down below, and I'll give them an answer, I'll see you next Wednesday. If you'd like to see more awesome content, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, New videos are posted every day of the week. Also, check out my website and register so you can post in the forums. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Like me on Facebook. Add me to your Google Plus circles. And check out my merchandise store to pick up some awesome swag. 444RR. Game shows, magic, and more.